Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I know we visited the gold bug, uh, gold mine the other day, uh, but the true story of the start of the gold rush actually happened also in this area in a place called Sutter's Mill. And today we're gonna go there and we're gonna check out the site. I believe there's a museum there, kind of a fun little gift shop. Um, and of course we can go right down by the river and I think I'm gonna maybe go buy a uh, uh, Some of some simple supplies and maybe we'll do a little panning for gold today. See what we can find. Let's go to Sutter Mill So we saw one of these at the gold bug mine This is how they uh, They crush the ore coming out of the ground so they could separate the oil from the rest of the stuff and once again, this one has a wooden wheel, just like the other one. And this is another one, uh, an even larger model. These are larger hammers, must be for like larger rocks. And I only see two hammers on this one. You can still see it still has the belt that uh, drives the thing. I don't know if it looks, like, looks to me like the belt probably goes out to that side over there. And it looks like something got ripped off over here too, so. Maybe whatever it was. I don't know. This could have been like, I don't know how this would have been powered. In a day, it'd be a, it'd be a motor, but you remember this was the 1850s. They didn't have a whole lot of motors then. Oh, this is kind of interesting. This is a very, very early method of doing it. Basically, you just yank the top of a tree down, you attach a branch to it, and you just wiggle the tree up and down, and, the, and it lifts the uh, rock up and down and smashes the ore. Oh, and we saw one of these too. Same kind of principle we saw there at the uh, the gold bug mine. This one's a little bit more primitive, I think, but basically you grab that, walk around the circle, and it drags those stones in the middle over the ore, and that crushes it. All right, so this is an example of a miner's cabin here. Uh, apparently, originally when they came here, what they'd do is they would build uh, little canvas tents made out of the uh, sails from the boats that they got out of uh, San Francisco Bay. But as they realized that they were going to be here longer and longer, they started building structures like this to live in. Not particularly good insulation though. I mean, you know, it gets cold here at this part of the country in the winter and hot in the summer. I wouldn't want to be here in either of those times. I'm going to kind of shoot this one from an angle because the sun's in a really bad place and well, it, it will become difficult to read if we're this way. So uh, we got a couple things here. This is talking about how they did the mining. Uh, some of them, sometimes they use what they call these sluice boxes, which basically, you gotta remember, and I talked about this the other day, that the, the reason gold mining works in panning for gold works is because the gold is heavier than all the other minerals in the uh, in the soil. So what you do is you use water, water to kind of wash the lighter minerals away and what's left over is the gold. And so that's what this thing did. Basically you put all the soil in this long uh, trough thing here. They ran water through it. The water ran pushed all the softer minerals away and the gold all sank to the bottom. And that was how they how they retrieved it. And then, of course, we're all familiar with the old panning for gold. And we're going to maybe hopefully try and do a little of that today. And this is kind of talking about how the gold got there. Remember in the other, in the other mine, they talked about uh, how they would find veins of quartz. And they would dig up those veins of quartz and, tear it and bring all that down and bring that out. And that was where the gold was. Well, <clears throat> apparently over time, when these veins of quartz hit the ground, you know, hit surface level, they're eroded away to there on the surface and water uh, runs over it. The water dissolves the quartz over, and over time the gold is released into the rivers. And so that's how it gets all over here. So like I said, we're going to go over to the river at some point and take a look at that, but let's see what, what else we can see here. All right, the museum is open. I'm there. All right, so they got some displays here of different parts of the gold rush. Uh, Basically what happened is James Sutter and basically what happened, John Sutter and James Marshall were, had collected this area and were going to turn it into a sawmill. And in the process of building the sawmill, James Marshall was down along the water and he saw what looked like gold in the river. 
and basically they tried to keep it a secret but it didn't last long and eventually all the people who had been hired to build the sawmill for the, for the men uh, deserted and the area got just basically uh, invaded by gold miners and squatters and the likes and it's funny because within a couple of years uh, John Sutter was actually bankrupt because of all this. Oh, and there was uh, several Native American tribes that lived in the area at the time, and basically, you know, they were unconcerned about all this gold rush stuff. They they just wanted the area for, for you know, food and for land and for sustaining themselves. And apparently, the whole gold rush thing just literally destroyed the tribe. So this is uh, another kind of a little thing displaying the discovery of gold. And you've got the gold twinkling there. Some possessions from the original pioneers. James Marshall's hand mirror, pocket watch, and a potato masher. Hey, that's just what you'd need out in the uh, wilderness, right? Over here, it looks like we've got some, uh, some, well, it looks like gold. Yeah, I guess that's probably gold. And this kind of shows the scales of how they measured it. And here you get a little balance here and you get a, a known weight on this side and the amount of gold on this side. And if you can use that to figure out how much gold you got. And that's how you trade it for goods. All right, this exhibit kind of shows some of the geology uh, that's found in the area. You know, you got mica here, which kind of breaks into these thin sheets. Uh, uh, and sometimes it was mistaken for gold because it can kind of glitter a little bit, but it isn't really gold. Uh, this is limestone. Limestone. We've talked about limestone. There's limestone under my house in Texas, too. Apparently this part of uh, California was under an ocean uh, about 250 to 290 million years ago in the Permian period. This is what's kind of interesting when you what they're looking for because this is quartz. And quartz tends to uh, to uh, be in the same area. It seems to it seems to form in the same places where the gold is pushed up through the earth. So this, these are the types of uh, veins that they're looking for. Now you have to be kind of be careful because this looks like it might be the same thing, but this is actually uh, iron pyrite. Uh, iron iron pyrite, often referred to as fool's gold. And then, of course, this is an example of serpentine, uh, which is, really doesn't have a whole lot to do with, with this particular story, except for the fact that this is the official state rock of California, just in case you wanted to know. This map here kind of shows the whole area where uh, the so-called mother lode was uh, found. And uh, as we've discussed a little bit earlier, basically what's said to have happened about 200 million years ago uh, there was a crack in the earth right along here and a bunch of uh, uh, silica, basically uh, a sand, it's like glass, uh, kind of melted its way up, kind of oozed its way up into these cracks and there was gold embedded in those, in that uh, silica and it cooled, crystallized, turned into the quartz stuff that we see now and that gold is still in there. Here's some of the uh, different necessities of life uh, for the miners in these days. And of course, your gold pan right there. Coffee pot, coffee, looks like probably a coffee grinder. Pick, shovel, backpack. That's even kind of, it looks like an old uh, wooden mining pan. Some of the cooking utensils. Things they do to entertain themselves. Cribbage board, dominoes. So here's an example of an old sluice box. Basically what happens, you'd shovel your debris into here. It would kind of flow through there with water. And you'd grab this little thing and rock it back and forth. And uh, that would cause the water to kind of flow back and forth and kind of uncover un un uh, the gold as it goes. Here's actually a video of it happening right here.
So they got a little gift shop attached to that museum, and I'll probably go check that out at the end, but I don't want to have to carry anything around with me, so let's go see what else is here. Got out of that museum just in time as I was coming out. The whole, the whole school uh, classroom of kids was going in. Okay, let's see if we can get close enough that you don't see me, that you see what's inside here. An old wagon. Obviously used to probably hire uh, to haul ore around. Oops. So I'm trying to cover up here so we can... Glass isn't the best way to protect this thing. I'd put like a screen in front of it or something so people can see. Oh yeah, we saw one of these too at the gold bug mine. This is uh, the, the hydraulic mining where they just basically erode a whole mountain away uh, using high water, high pressure from the water to just kind of wash away the whole side of the mountain. And this ultimately was all but banned because of how much destruction it caused. Not only just the, the destruction of these mountains, but also uh, the, the ecological disaster that happened downstream with all the tailings. Yes, even a even hundred years later, you can still see evidence of this. Oh, and as I was walking on my way to my next location, I just saw these doors were open, and looks like there's a little bit of a museum in here, so let's go look at this. during those days. Actual photo of a, uh, of a sluice box. I don't know if there were any elephants down here though. Just saying, that might be a little bit of fake news. Oh, here's another one of those hydraulic water cannons. December 8th, 1863. Now you may recall when we were in the other mine, they talked about how they drilled the holes for the explosives and basically it was it was just done by hand one person holding on to the uh, to the drill bit and the other person whacking on it with a hammer this apparently came afterwards and they and they discovered they didn't just have they couldn't just use hydraulic pressure for eroding the mountain away they could use the hydraulic pressure for driving these drills and so this is one of those drills right here Guess the water goes in here and then you can reposition where it is once you've uh, dug down to uh, you know reposition and dig deeper all right that's one of those things that you probably don't forget kind of a little uh, rebuilt uh, mine shaft here this one isn't quite so low though I can actually walk through here without having to uh, stoop like I did in that other one all right, this is a display that shows massive uh, gold mining potential here. What they do is they create these big, long sluice boxes here. And the uh, soil is basically picked up off of the bottom of the river there. And that whole thing is, is driven by a water flow. So what ends up happening is on this side here, there's boxes. And the boxes pick up the soil and the water and pour them into this little gate here, into this little trough here. And it rolls all the way this way and all the way along here. This is where they're kind of, uh, you know, having the water kind of wash away the, the soil. And uh, so they can extract the gold. And it comes back down here and it's fed back into the river again. And then here they actually have uh, two more water wheels. This one here appears to be used to uh, probably uh, move uh, the uh, dirt and uh, whatever is going to whatever they're going to mine. Move it from here up into the sluice, into the uh, into the trough there. And 
this one here appears to be driving this belt thing and I'm not sure what that is that might be that might also be part of the uh, collection of the raw ore so in this building there's a kind of a replica of a Chinese store apparently the Chinese were obviously in California at this po at point and there wasn't really good integration between the white settlers and the Chinese settlers so they kind of set up their own economy so this was like a, a trading store it was a bank and it also just kind of a social gathering site now this little display here um, is more about the original sawmill that was put here. Um, at one point, like I said, this was originally, they were building a sawmill when they discovered gold here. And uh, the sawmill itself uh, wasn't used much after about 1850 and was actually destroyed in a flood in 1862. But uh, about, about uh, 80 years later, they were kind of excavating in the area and they found these hand, uh, hand-shaped uh, lumber beams here, which are believed to probably have been part of the original uh, sawmill that was built here. Now there is another sawmill that's here. They've just uh, reconstructed it, but it's a, just a reproduction. But we're gonna go see that too, and we're gonna go down by the river, which is where the gold was actually found. Some more California wildflowers. So this is a reproduction of the sawmill that was built on the location. It was all driven by water. So the water would go through here, the paddle wheel would uh, spin with the river's flow, and the logs would be up there on the top. And you can see the, uh, the saw blade is directly attached to the water wheel. So as the water wheel goes around, the uh, saw blade goes up and down. That was how they cut the lumber. And then when it was done, I guess they rolled it down these, uh, these uh, timbers here down to the bottom where they could be uh, then uh, hauled off. Now, one of the odd things about these is that these were always designed to be temporary. Because what would end up happening is it would become too much of a hassle to, uh, to you know, move the lumber to the sawmill. So what they'd do is they'd build a sawmill like this and harvest the local trees and as soon as it become became impractical to begin hauling trees from further and further away they'd abandon one sawmill and build another but you can kind of see off in the distance there that's where the river is and you can see it's kind of flowing that way well what they do is they divert the river this way to have some of the river go through here and like i said they build the sawmill then open it up and have the water flow through here also and then back out and then rejoin the river and they take advantage of that water power. Pretty ingenious. Now obviously there's something weird going on with gravity here because there's a couple of these rocks that are really precariously balanced up over here. Gotta wonder how nature can do that, huh? There's another one over here too. Strange. Oh, see, I bet you that lizard's helping. He's helping to keep the balance. See, so you just dig into something, you find the secrets real quick. Some kind of metal was found in the tail race that looked a lot like gold. That's what started it all, right here. Actually, right over there. Yep, this is where it was, right here. Sutter's Mill. Right along the river. Kind of take a walk out there and let's see uh, how close we can get to the water here. I'm kind of thinking it might be kind of fun to uh, go get a get some mining equipment and some you know a pan here and see if I can pan for a little gold. I guess it all depends on whether I see anything first. It doesn't look like there's anything here to pan for. It's all just rocks. I would bet you somewhere up the bank a little bit, or even maybe over there. If there's a little sandy spot that goes down to the river over there, I would bet you there's one on this side if we walk along the river a little bit. I don't think I'd get a whole lot of gold out of this area. But here you go, this is where, where the gold rush started, right here.
This rock monument marks the site of John A. Sutter's sawmill in the Tellerys, of which James W. Marshall discovered gold on January 24, 1884, starting the great rush of Argonauts to California. Yeah, here's a little walkway right down to the river's edge. Let's go down there. It's a little steep, but I can make it. Let's see if I'm gonna go get some get a a gold mining pan. This would probably a good be a good place to do it. See, this is the kind of soil that you would have been looking at. Now this is all rock here, so. I don't know how much sand we'd get down there. Oh yeah, there's sand in there. That's exactly the kind of place you might find gold. And I do see some little sparkles of stuff in there. Look right there. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. This is definitely the place I'm going to come down to if I uh, go get some, get some gold mining gear here. And since this is really close to the mine anyway, um, I decided to stop by here. This is uh, California Interstate 153, California's shortest state highway. Yeah, it's all about three quarters of a mile long. It goes up to the Marshall Monument. So we're going to kind of take the whole, whole tri trip up here and show you the whole highway in its entirety. Get ready. Yep, that's it. Man, after that long of a trip, I'm gonna probably have to fill up again. Now, since John Sutter got his uh, monument down by the river where the gold was found, and it was actually James Marshall that found it, I guess they decided it was appropriate that James should get his own uh, monument here too. And this is just kind of a little monument that's built on the side of the hill overlooking the water. So, that's a pretty massive thing, huh? So yeah, there is the monument to James Marshall. Got some of the gold panning uh, stuff on the side there. 48 for 1848. Little artwork in there. Looks like a lot like the, uh, the logo of the state of California. Tribute to the people who put it up. And I guess kind of a tribute to what this was originally planned to be here, which was a mill. Because there they got saws and axes and the kind of stuff you'd be using for hauling logs around. And sort of a little artwork there, I think, probably showing the, uh, the logging industry. And of course, he's kind of got the place of honor here because he's got a nice view of the, uh, the river down there. That's where it all happened, right there. And kind of behind those trees right there is where the river is. That building that you see, like, right there, that's uh, on this side of the river. So, yeah, that's quite a view. So I bought a little gold pan, just a little cheap plastic one. It came with a free little instruction on how to pan for gold. I also got a little glass vial to collect any gold that I do find. I do actually expect I find some because it's just little flakes in there. And I mean, you know, it's, I'm not gonna, I'm definitely not gonna be retiring with this, but you know, it'll be fun to go do it and see what we do find.
All right, so I've read through the manual a little bit, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just scoop some uh, soil out of here. It says I can actually use my hands to scoop it in if I want, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm just gonna kind of leave it in here, kind of it'll wash away kind of the loose stuff, the stuff that's floating away. And from this point, it just says kind of shake it and stir it around a little bit. And what will happen is the, is the water will pull some of the bigger chunks off of there. And I'm gonna kind of, I'm kind of digging through it by hand right now just to get the, the big rocks out, throw those back into the water, because we don't need those. The basic point is you just want to kind of keep everything moving because as you wash, uh, as the water washes the, uh, the lighter stuff out of the uh, bowl, the heavier stuff, the gold, which they say is about 20 times heavier than anything else in the water, that will all kind of just sink to the bottom. And supposedly when you get it down to about this level of the soil in there, you've washed all the way all the loose stuff, then uh, all those little flecks of gold in there, I see a lot of them in there. They're little teeny tiny pieces, but there is definitely gold in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through that right now and I'm gonna see if I can pick some of these pieces out and uh, get something good. All right, I don't know if you can see it, but I actually did get a couple of little gold flecks. Now I was a little bit disappointed when I was doing this because it would have been nice if I had like a pair of tweezers or something like that. Getting this stuff out of the soil with your hands can be a little bit of a challenge. Now one of the things I did do is I actually had an old Gatorade bottle sitting in the car so I went and got some uh, sand from the river and what I'll do is I'll go home and uh, we'll try this again uh, and I'll have like some tweezers or something to pull the pull anything I found out of it because there's a whole bunch of stuff that I saw when I was uh, when I was panning for it that you know I, I would just move the bowl the wrong way though the sand would get covered up again and I wouldn't be able to find it so I think uh, like I said uh, uh, I'll do it a little under a little bit more controlled conditions I may wait until we get back to, to Texas to to try this but um, this was kind of an interesting trip uh, so I hope you enjoyed this one uh, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on escaping the mouse good night